Hi, I'm Lee Harris, I'm an energy intuitive and every month I take the pulse as to what's going on on planet Earth. A few themes coming up in December 2018. Leveling up, it's going to be a big few months. The waiting game, those of you who feel like you're waiting for change, have some anger, frustration about that, I have a message for you. And last but not least, connection, love or judgment, fear. Stay tuned to learn more. Hi everyone, welcome to the energy update for December 2018 and this month I'm coming to you from Lanai in Hawaii which is a stunning place, beautiful energy, so I'm glad to be here. Thank you to all of you who sent messages to those of us going through the California wildfires. It has certainly been intense but I have to say and some of you may have seen the videos I've shared about this both on social media and in the portal. Uh, it's been a really interesting and very telling and informing experience for me as to some of the stuff that has been coming up as predictions for this period of time as to what we're going to go through and how to handle it. So to all of you who sent messages of love, thank you so much. But to the energy update. December 2018 is going to be an interesting month and the first thing that came to me when I was tuning in is that this next three months there is going to be quite a leveling up for most of us on the planet, particularly those of you who identify as light workers, way showers, whatever your term is. Now you might say, oh my god, it's been one hell of a year already and I agree with you but this leveling up energy and experience is going to continue quite strongly from now through the end of February. It's arguable to me that this leveling up is just going to continue indefinitely but the reason I'm asked to focus on these next three months for you is for those of you who are feeling that you are still having what you might call resistance or fear or going through tough times just be as loving and as kind to yourself when you go through those periods of time. I know many spiritually minded people or even non-spiritually minded people who kick themselves when they're down or when they're struggling and I think for most of us it can be easier to be loving or kind to a friend than it can be for us to be towards ourselves. There is a lot of intensity going on and the disorientation that most people are feeling both because they're going through a huge personal transformation but also because of what's going on collectively and how strong the planetary energies are and also the political and the human energies are all across the world. It's quite the ride and so be as kind to yourself as you can and nurture yourself. I know some of you who followed me for a few years might be bored of hearing me say this but I'm called to say it over and over again just as I'm called to practice it in a deeper way all the time because what we tend to go through when we're leveling up is we go through speed bumps in our journey. So you might suddenly have what you experience as a breakthrough and then you have a little regression or a little crash and then you have another breakthrough and you go up and then you have a little regression and a little crash. And I sometimes meet people who have a belief that they should be balanced or constant all the time and that's a myth. None of us are but the reason I bring this into sharp focus for you the next few months is the energies are intense. If you're somebody who feels energy and emotion and the unseen or the unspoken about a lot, this next three months is going to be quite a culmination. So I'm called as I say this to say if any of you identify with the last 18 months as being a bit of a rocket in terms of your personal transformation, you're not done yet. And this next three months is going to be quite the cap on everything that you've gone through because next year, 2019 onwards, power, the word power is going to come strongly into focus both for each individual and for us as a collective and us as a world. So you're not done yet claiming more of your power. And hey, if that means you're curled up in a ball some days because you're like, oh my God, I just can't take anymore, it's okay. Don't beat yourself up. That can be par, par for the course and part of the process. And by all means, in those moments, practice the things that you know can elevate you. Because one of the things that we're breaking is a pattern of fear or a pattern of darkness. All of us who are being asked to elevate and who are willing to elevate 
we're going into what I sometimes call the small self to really re-experience what was that wounded part of me that needs to now expand. And there is energy in that wounded part of me that wants to re-enter my life force. Because as we do that for ourselves, we do that for others too. Which brings me to my next point, knotted emotions in the collective. This was a very strong message. Many people, however awake or spiritually inclined they may or may not seem, the knotting of emotion is really rising to the surface. So people are getting very tight in their emotions and freaking out about things. I've even seen this recently in the experience of being in the wildfires. You know, most of us, as, as much as we were going through really intense stuff and definitely having body reactions, I would also see many people who could only sit in anger or blame or judgment and I fully understand it. I understand the, where they're at and support their emotion. But there is something for all of us here about being able to go beyond the knotted and the wounded emotions. And it is a time where safety is really in question for many people in the mainstream. Many people who haven't investigated this are a little bit heartbroken right now about what they're seeing happen on the planet. And it's understandable if you think of yourself and the years ago that perhaps you first tapped into how things weren't quite how you thought they were down here. Uh, you may have gone through grief and heartbreak. I know I did many, many years ago. And so lots of people right now are going through experiences where they're looking at the world and, and they don't understand it. And it can be very frightening to be a human being. That can be part of the experience. But more importantly, that is fed to us. We are fed fear. And so be as compassionate as you can and be a shoulder to lean on when you can to those people who you see who are going through mini breakdowns or emotionally crumbling. I know many of you may have had to find a boundary around that. Perhaps you're the person who was always the shoulder to cry on and it wore you out many years ago. So you learned to pull back. You learned to find a boundary. My message to you is that most of us now are pretty strong at being able to be there at most moments. Of course, look after yourself when you need to, but most of us can handle being the shoulder. And that's what we're here for. That's part of our path. That's what we're supposed to do. And that's how we're supposed to give back, just as other people on the planet will give to us. We are one tribe and perhaps your skill is to help those around you who you see are in knotted emotions, tight emotions, reactive emotions. Maybe you're supposed to be the balm to help them through it. So just sit with that as you notice these little explosions going on around you. And it's interesting because we're coming up to Christmas, which is always an intense time for people. It's always a time where family and childhood stuff rises to the surface. So just be mindful of how many people are in emotional need right now. And even just a smile from you or a loving look or you not freaking out that they're having a meltdown could be huge for them and could be them being understood at an all new level. And that is the kind of compassion that builds community and that spreads across the planet. One act of love or kindness to someone else will have a butterfly effect when they then pass it on. So wherever and whenever you can offer that, it's so important. And I know many of you will do this naturally, but there is going to be a little bit of an emotional crisis at a stronger level in the next few months that you might see going on around you. So just be mindful of that. The other piece I want to address this month is playing a waiting game. This is not my story, but this came through very strongly. So there are obviously many of you who are going through this experience where you feel you are playing a waiting game, waiting for life to happen, waiting for a transformation to happen. And what I was shown that you have an anger and a frustration, a really strong emotion around this. The message is that the anger and the frustration can't go with you. The anger and the frustration is actually what it is that you are trying to get in touch with and burn off before you move into your new circumstance or your new relationship. And that that's really important. So for those of you who are really hacked off at the way that things are going right now, 
rather than thinking there's a problem or something's gone wrong or the universe has forgotten you, get really curious about the part of you that's hacked off, the part of you that's angry, the part of you that's frustrated. For some of you, this might be a new feeling. So it's actually reasonably healthy for you to feel your frustration or feel your anger, to let your fire back in. But for those of you that anger and frustration has become a pattern for, what can you do to elevate that? What can you do to change that? It might need your attention. There might be wounds, expectations, and experiences that you've got in there that just need some holding. So maybe you could sit and journal for yourself. What is this anger trying to tell me? What part of my energy field is trying to rebirth itself? Or if you feel it's a really chronic issue, get some help. Find a counselor or a therapist or a healer or a friend who can help you just sit with this anger and open it out. Because for many of you who feel you're playing a waiting game and you're frustrated about it, my question to you is, there are actions you can take to change things. So if you're feeling that those actions aren't something you are willing to take or are taking, or that the universe isn't supporting you, what are you getting out of this emotion? And what is this emotion trying to tell you? It's a really important one. So don't beat yourself up if this is your story. There is fire and there is energy in that anger and that frustration and you can unlock it and you can figure it out so that you can move forward because you, my friend, are needed and now is your time. You are needed more than ever. So let's get you into a position where you feel you have a bit more freedom and a bit more room to be of service to your life and to others. This leads me to one of the big arcs for December and it is connection, which is love, or judgment, which is fear. In my Costa Rica Soul Magic retreat recently, I would say the biggest theme that we worked was this dance between connection and judgment and how our judgment of others or of ourselves keeps us out of our heart and out of connection with ourselves and with others. So you may be finding opportunities coming up in a big way right now to help you connect to people that you wouldn't normally connect to, connect to experiences that you normally would deny yourself, or your judgment might be coming up in a really big way. And that's gonna be part of that up and down zigzag that I spoke about at the very beginning of this update. This healing crisis, if you like, that many of you are going through as you go through your leveling up. There might be moments where you feel more judgmental of yourself or others than ever before. The trick is when this happens, again, investigate it, get curious about it, go, this is very interesting, what is this? Rather than beat yourself up or decide that the person that you're judging needs an angry email or for you to go over to their house and tear a few pieces out of them verbally, because that probably isn't gonna go very well. So connection or judgment. So those of you who are really deeply experiencing connection, you might be feeling your heart, your experience of presence, presence with this planet, presence with other people at an all new level. You might be experiencing the opposite. You might be feeling withdrawn, cocooned, and judgmental of the outside world. Just get curious about it. Remember, we don't stay anywhere permanently. It's all a movement. But if you get curious about what you might call your shadow side or your more negative emotions, this is a time where you're gonna move them really quickly and you'll be surprised how quickly you come out of those judgments and those experiences. Last but not least, we are built to handle change. Only fear tells us that we aren't. I can testify that um, one of the experiences I had when I was evacuating with falling ash on the car and going through black and orange skies is even though all of the usual systems weren't working, no cell phone, none of the usual things that we would rely on, you figure it out and we are built to handle change. And that was one of the messages I was called to give you this month. We're built to handle change. It's what we're here for. It's what many of us are here to shepherd. And so if you find yourself getting caught in fear, someone's telling you a story about how things are gonna go and you start to panic. A news source is telling you a story about how awful the world is. Just be really mindful about fear as propaganda and how fear is used for control. And for all of us, one of the biggest mastery tests that we are going through right now is how do we work with our fear as it comes up, transmute it, and get back to the place where we trust what is going on 
on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I'm not saying that's easy. For most of us, that's not normal. That's not our norm. But more and more people are popping into that state of being and most of us are moving more into that. So it's really important to just monitor that. We are built to handle change. It's what we're here for. It's where new energy lies for us and it's what this period of time is inviting us to. So, thank you for tuning in. You can learn more from me at leeharrisenergy.com. I'm thrilled to announce that we are holding Rebirth 2019. We did Rebirth 2018 last year over the Christmas and New Year period. It's an online experience, so if you want to sign up but you can't join us every single day, don't worry. All of the video and audio content will be filed for you so that you can access it anytime. We had 1400 people join us last year from 40 countries and it was a phenomenal experience. I've got some really important teachings inside Rebirth this year as well as the channeling I'm going to be doing live about 2019 and beyond. So I hope you can join us for Rebirth 2019. All members of the portal get a discount price on that. So to portal members, we'd love to see you in Rebirth. And if you're curious about the portal, it's my monthly members club where I do a deep dive every month on the energies and also answer audience questions. And so that's a broadcast that happens every month. It's archived. You get the latest monthly MP3, which we'll play you a clip of in just a moment. And you also get Qigong medicine from Stephen Washington, a community forum, and lots of other bonuses and special offers. So we'd love to see you in the portal if that resonates. For now, I'm going to play you a clip from this month's MP3. Thanks for joining. Lots of love, everyone. Have a great December. If you imagine right now a map of your world, you could visualize 20% of your planet as having active, open, compassionate hearts right now. And then there is another 40 or 50% of your planet that are in and out. They are often people who are doing wonderful things, by the way. Some of them are some of the people you might revere for being so heartfelt, but they are perhaps in and out of the heart connection for their skill at moving generational pain, easing generational pain, has come because they have also visited it, carried it, become empathic with it so that they can mirror and move it for others when the time is needed. That group, over the next two to three years, are about to go through quite an awakening where the heart is concerned. And it's going to shift a lot of responsibility for them into an all new paradigm. And the timing will be perfect. And then as for the remainder, they are waking up slowly too. It only takes a very tiny percentage of people to want to be destructive and cause chaos. Please remember this. That's very important. As you go through these times, it can be alarming, it can raise primal fear. Try and remember that the root cause of the problem is far smaller than you think. This is also a metaphor for you and your life. You do not see or honor how beautiful you really are because you have been trained to look for the problem or the area of yourself that needs to grow a little more.